So, in the last class, I have discussed about different types of uh, shear failure, general shear failure, uh, local shear failure and the punching shear failure. And then, uh, I have discussed about the first bearing capacity theory, which was proposed by Tazaki and what are the assumptions that is it is apply, applied for the stiff footing, then homogeneous soil, 2 D analysis, general shear failure and it is the loading is vertical and the concentric, then it is the surface is horizontal, then it is applicable if the depth of the footing is less than equal to the width of the footing and all these assumptions I have discussed. And then uh, there are three, uh, three zones, how these zones are formed and then what are the three zones, zone 1 is the elastic equilibrium, state of elastic equilibrium, zone 2 is this zone of radial shear and zone 3 is the Rankine passive zone. So, now, uh, these are the what are the forces is acting on this uh, wedge. So, now, as I uh, discuss that these are the forces and in addition to that, there will be a W s, which is the weight of the, the soil weight of this wedge. So, now, if I uh, now, take the equilibrium of the all the forces. Now, if this is the width, the first the q u which is acting in downward direction. So, q u into b that will be, so q u is the stress and if we multiply it, it will be the force and remember that here it is in 2 D analysis, the unit of the force will be kilo Newton per meter if it is plane strain analysis or it, if it is strip footing. So, the force unit will be kilo Newton per meter, stress unit q u unit will be this q u unit will be kilo Newton per meter square, but force will be kilo Newton per meter because it is in for strip footing. So, now q u into b, then the p p is acting p p and this is the into 2 because p p is acting this side, p p is acting this side. So, but this is acting in upward direction, but q u b is acting in downward direction and because we are now equating all the forces which is acting in the vertical direction, whether it is downward or the upward. So, q u b into b p p is the force already and then plus the addition is acting. So, but if I take the vertical component of the addition, because this is the angle phi. So, it has a horizontal component and it has a vertical component. Okay? So, addition. So, if I take the vertical component, so this will be C A into sin phi. Okay? So, C A into sin phi and 2, 2 because this 2 is it is in two phases. So, C A is the adhesive force, it is also C A unit is kilo Newton per meter, it is the force. Okay? Now, this is also acting in upward direction, P P is acting on the upward direction, but the W S weight is acting on the downward direction. So, these are the forces is acting in this wedge. Now, how we can take all the components? So, first we are talking about how we will get the W s. W s is the wedge weight of the soil within this wedge A, B, D. So, we can say this the area of this triangle is half into base, base is the b into the height, height is this one. So, this value is b by 2. So, this value is b by 2, this angle is phi. So, this will be equal to b by 2 into tan phi. So, height of this or you can say if this is o. So, the o d will be b by 2 
into tan phi and that is the height. So, half into b into b by 2 into tan phi. So, it will be 1 by 4 b square into tan phi okay? and then we have to multiply with the unit weight of the soil. So, gamma is the unit weight of the soil. So, finally, W s we will get. Now, C a, now C a is equal to as I mentioned that this is the alpha into the small c, C a is the capital C, a small c is small c value is the cohesion. So, small c is the cohesion and it is acting on this uh, side of this O H. So, C A is the force and alpha c is the cohesion addition which is acting on this side of the well, wall and the force means if I want to get the force we have to multiply it with the B D or A D. So, what is the B D? B D value is B D value is this is B by 2, this is phi. So, the B D value will be B by 2 divided by cos phi. So, we have to multiply with, with the B D. So, that will give alpha into small c into B by 2 divided by cos phi. Now, as I mentioned this is the imaginary wall. So, alpha value will be here. 1 because it is basically soil versus soil. So, alpha value if I take 1, so this will be C B divided by 2 cos phi. Now, if I put all these values here, then I can write that Q U B will be equal to 2 P P plus 2 into C B divided by 2 cos phi into sin phi minus 1 fourth uh, gamma B square tan phi. Okay. And finally, the form will be 2 p p plus c b into tan phi. So, this will be c b tan phi minus 1 by 4 gamma b square into again tan phi. So, this will be 2 p p into c b tan phi into gamma b square into tan phi by 1 4. So, phi is the friction angle, C is the cohesion. So, the C is the cohesion whose unit is kilo Newton per meter square. So, once I get this expression, then so we have to now here another thing is that P P is the passive force. Okay. So, this unit is kilo Newton per meter. Okay. So, we will finally, get this expression. So, once I get uh, this expression, then we have to calculate how we will simplify this expression and finally, got a common form of expression. So, now, if I take this expression again. So, if I write Q u b will be equal to 2 p p plus b c tan phi minus 1 by 4 gamma b square into tan phi. Now, p p is function of 3 factors. 
that means P P the passive resistance is coming from for three reasons. The first reasons the passive resistance is coming for for the cohesion of the soil. The second one the passive resistance is coming due to the weight of the soil and the third reason is the passive resistance is coming due to the surcharge of the that is applied. Because as I mentioned the soil above the base of the foundation where the contribution is taken as a surcharge which is acting on the base of the foundation. So, that surcharge will contribute in the passive resistance. So, that means there is a three contribution one is the contribution due to the surcharge then contribution due to the cohesion of the soil and the contribution due to the weight of the soil. So, now P P I can write that this P P is this is the P P gamma plus P P C plus P P Q. So, this is the gamma where this is where when we calculate the P P gamma we consider that C is equal to 0, Q is equal to 0. That means, the cohesion is 0 and surcharge is also not applied. So, this is due to the weight. So, this is due to the soil due to the soil weight and when you con consider this contribution the con you can uh, consider uh, you assume that soil is cohesionless and surcharge is nil and this PPC this is the contribution due to the cohesion and we when you consider this one we assume that Q is equal to 0 and gamma is also equal to 0. That means, the soil is weightless and the surcharge is nil and the third one this is this is due to the surcharge and when we consider this one we assume that that our soil is weightless and cohesion is also 0. So, now these are the three contribution that we are writing. So, finally, if I put this contribution in the P P then then the Q U B will be equal to 2 P P P gamma plus P P C plus P P P P Q okay, plus B C tan phi minus 1 fourth gamma b square tan phi. Okay. So, now if now finally, after solving this equation. So, in the detailed solution I am not giving. So, from here I am just writing the final form of the uh, equation, because I have given you the what are the contribution how these things are coming. So, final form of the in, uh, equation is we can write that from here that 2 all the uh, gamma count component p p gamma 2 p p gamma minus 1 fourth gamma b square tan phi that is equal to half b gamma n gamma b and we can write that all the cohesion components P P C 2 P P P P C plus B C tan phi is equal to B into C n C and so if I put this expression here then finally, the ultimate load carrying capacity Q u will be that C n C because this B B will cancel out C n C plus Q n Q 
plus half gamma b n gamma. So, this is the final expression of the ultimate load carrying capacity of the soil. So, based on the Tazaki. So, from here to here, I am just directly writing, but these are the final things. Now, what is n c, n q, n gamma? So, these are called bearing capacity factors. So, this is this is these are the n c, n q, n gamma and q what is q? This q is equal to gamma into d f. So, that is a surcharge which is acting at the base of the footing that is q. So, that means, we have the final equation c is the equation and q ultimate q u is the ultimate load carrying capacity of the soil and that is equal to c n c q n q plus half gamma b n gamma. Now, on one thing I want to mention because there is two gammas here. Na? One is here also gamma and another gamma is here. So, this is the surcharge. So, remember that if the soil is homogeneous because that is the adjunction here. So, in that case all the gammas are same. So, uh, if the soil is homogeneous then, then it is the same gamma you have to use, but uh, otherwise this gamma represent the soil below the base of footing and this gamma represent the soil above the base of the footing. So, because these are the two things um, I mean two different way because this is this. So, that means finally, so this is the gamma or d f into gamma which is above the footing because this is the above the base of the footing because this is the surcharge. So, now final form of this expression I am getting. So, finally, after if I uh, write this uh, expression, then you will get this is the final developed uh, ultimate bearing capacity which is C n c gamma d f depth of foundation n q plus half gamma b n gamma. So, these are the expression of this three bearing capacity factors are given n c, n q and n gamma. So, now if you look at this n c, n q, n gamma. So, these are function of phi. So, you can see. So, these are all function of phi. So, here these bearing capacity factors as per the this Tazaki these are function of phi and these are the equation that finally, we will get. Now, from this equation if I know the unit weight of the soil, if I know the strength parameter that is c and phi, then if we put this value, if I know the depth of foundation and the width of foundation. So, that means, if I know the width of foundation, depth of foundation, strength parameter and unit weight of the soil, then we can determine what will be the ultimate bearing capacity of the soil or foundation. Now, so, here based on uh, as this uh, n c n q n gamma function of phi. So, Tazaki has given this uh, chart for bearing capacity factors n c n q n gamma for different phi values. Okay. These are for different phi values, these are in degree, phi is in degrees from 0 to 50. So, now if you look at this 0 value, if your phi is equal to 0, then as per the Tazaki, the n c is 5.7, q n q is 1 and n gamma is 0. Okay? And then these are the factors, it is given up to 50 degree uh, for the phi value. So, this chart table we, we will use when we calculate the bearing capacity and we will get this n q, n c and n gamma value directly from this table. Now, one thing, uh, now as I mentioned that this uh, theory, it has several assumptions. The first uh, one as a, one of them is that this is applicable for general shear failure. Now, there are other two types of failure also that the local shear failure and the punching shear failure, because here we are not worried about the punching shear failure, because hardly we will 
place the foundation on a very soft soil okay so that possibility we are neglecting so that means you have, because if the soil is very poor so why should i place the foundation over there so in that way we can neglect the what will happen in the punching shear failure but we can place the foundation on the the moderately or relatively loose soil or the moderately or relatively soft uh, uh, clay so in that case the local shear failure will occur so now how i will you, uh, we can use this uh, theory which is developed for the general shear failure for the local shear failure now tazaki has <coughs> mentioned that if it is a local shear failure then the cohesion factor the cohesion value we have to take the 67% of the actual c so that mean your cm will be the mobilized two third of c and the mobilized shearing resistance phi value will be tan inverse two third of tan phi so what will what do we do we will take phi a new phi which is tan inverse two third of phi and you will calculate the bearing capacity factor based on this new phi okay phi m is that's why here this is nc dash nc dash uh, nq dash and n gamma dash dash means this bearing capacity factor is for local shear failure and it is determined by taking a new phi which is the two third tan inverse two third tan of the original phi okay so that's why and then c also we have to take instead of c we have to take two third of c so this is the recommendation for the local shear failure now the question is when we will use general shear failure expression and when we will use the local shear failure ex expression now if the soil is sandy soil that in pure sandy soil whose cohesion value is zero now here sometimes you will see this c dash c dash is if it is the effective uh, cohesion so uh, then in water table effect water effect is incorporated so now c dash or c if the it is purely uh, sandy soil or cohesion less soil then if phi value is greater than equal to 36 degree as per the recommendation provided by tazaki then purely general shear failure will occur so if the soil phi value c value is 0 and phi value is greater than equal to 36 degree then the general shear failure will occur and because in that case soil is in dense range if the phi value is greater than equal to 36 degree and if the soil is phi value is less than equal to 29 degree then the pure local shear failure will occur now if soil is in between this range that means within the 29 to 36 degree then there is the range of mixed state of general and local shear failure in that case so if phi is greater than equal to 36 degree the bearing capacity factor will use for the corresponding to original phi for our uh nc nq n gamma and we will put original phi value but if the uh, it is less than equal 29 degree then we will reduce it to a new phi phi m and then we will calculate the bearing capacity factor based on that new phi but if it is in between that then we have to linearly interpolate the bearing capacity factors so i will solve by example then i will show how we will linearly interpolate this uh, bearing capacity factor if your phi value is in between this range now if but if the soil is c phi soil then even if the phi value is less than equal to 29 degree there is no guarantee this always the local shear failure will occur because because this is this is not the only sand some cohesion is there na so that's why the strength will not be i mean it, we cannot say easily that it will be the uh, local shear if it is less than 29 degree because of the cohesion then maybe a general shear failure also and then 
how we will identify, how we will uh, identify whether there will be a local share failure or the general share failure, because in such case we have to take the load settlement curve. Okay. So, the, if it is a C phi soil, the failure of soil specimen occur at a relatively small uh, strain less than 5 percent, then the general shear failure occur. So, that means, in that case we have to collect the soil sample and we have to test it in the lab and then when we test it, we will get the load settlement curve. And if soil fails relatively small strain, that means, soil is stiff in uh, that range. So, that means, if it is less than 5 percent then it will be general shear failure. Now, if stress strain curve does not show peak and has a continuous rising pattern up to a strain 20 to 10 to 20 percent, then the local shear failure will occur. That means, for example, uh, if we have a say stress strain curve. So, that means, here you will get this, this is a particular peak is observed and this uh, soil specimen fail. So, this is the your strain and this is the stress and this is within the 5 percent strain, then this is the here this is the general shear failure. But, if the soil stress strain curve is something like this, there is no peak and it is going beyond say 10 to 20 percent of strain. This is the strain, this is the stress beyond 20 to 20 percent strain still we have this type of pattern, then this will be the local shear failure. Okay, so, in the C phi soil, not only phi will indicate that whether there will be a general shear failure or the local shear failure, we have to go for the stress strain curve and then we, we the, it will indicate whether there will be a general shear failure or the local shear failure. Now, again the <coughs> Tazak is bearing capacity ex, e, equation is developed for strip footing only. So, the original equation is developed for stiff footing, but later on there is some correction factors are introduced. So, that we can use this uh, equation for uh, for any kind of foundation whether it is uh, square, square footing, circular footing or rectangular footing. So, this is the correction. So, that means finally, the q u is the alpha 1 and alpha 2 are two corrections. So, it is c n c and alpha 2 gamma b in gamma. So, now for the stiff footing, this is the original equation developed by Stradjaki. So, in that case alpha 1 will be 1 and alpha 2 will be the half or 0.5 that is the case, but for the square footing it is the 1.3 alpha 1 uh, alpha 1 value is 1.3 and alpha 2 is 0.4. So, for the square footing q u will, will be 1.3 c n c plus gamma d f n q plus 0.4 gamma b n gamma. This is for square footing. Circular footing alpha 1 is 1.3 and alpha 2 is 0.3. So, these are the corrections for this three types of uh, stiff footing is not a correction because it is originally developed for this stiff footing. So, alpha 1 and alpha 2 for circular and square footing is uh, recommended like this. Now, from this it is extended for the rectangular footing also. So, rectangular footing the alpha 1 is 1 plus 0.3 b by l and alpha 2.5 1 minus 0.2 b by l, where b is the width of the footing, a is the length of the footing. Now, here if it is square footing say, then we will put uh, for the square footing b by l value is equal to 1, because your b is equal to l, because it is square footing. So, if you put 1, then it will be 1.3, which is the value for the square footing and it will be 1 minus 0 0.2. So, 0 0.8 into 0 0.5. So, this will be 0 0.4, which is the value. Now, if for the stiff footing, 
this b by l as the length is very large very very large compared to the width so in that case b by l value that means we consider l as a infinite so infinite means b by l value is zero so in that case if i put this is equal to zero alpha 1 is equal to 1 and if i put the b by l is equal to 0 then alpha 2 value will be 0 0.5 so this way it is extended for the rectangular footing. So, by using this um, corrections factor, now we can use it. So, these are called the shape factors. So, by these shape factors, now we can use this expression for any kind of footing. Now, uh, if I simplify this equation for ultimate bearing capacity for PLE cohesive soil is C is equal to 0. So, if C is equal to 0, then as I mentioned that your uh, this N C C is equal to 0, the first term will be vanish. So, that is why the equation will be the uh, second term and the third term. And if your uh, phi is equal to 0, then uh, if your phi is equal to 0, then your N Q value is equal to 1 and n gamma value is equal to 0. So, uh, already from the chart you can uh, see that. So, that is why the third term will vanish and there will be the first term and the second term n q value is equal to 1. So, now if it is purely cohesionless soil, then this is the expression simplified form and if it is a purely cohesive soil, then this is the expression. Now, next one is the, the, the last effect that I will discuss uh, on the this equation this water table effect, because uh, the Tazaki's uh, expression is developed without considering the water table, but the uh, in the in the in the field water table position is very important in the bearing capacity equation. So, now we have to incorporate the water table expression into the uh, water table effect into this expression. Now, this water table effect, so this is the final expression and now if our uh, phi is equal to 0, then saturated sex Q net ultimate will be 5.7 because if, sorry. So, if phi is equal to 0, as I mentioned, N C equal to 5.7, N Q equal to 1 and n gamma is equal to 0. Okay? So, this expression this n gamma will vanish and n q will be the, so finally, expression q ultimate will be c n c plus q and equal to c u under equation or c u c into 5.7 plus q. Now, this q is equal to d, uh, gamma into d f. So, this is the grow ultimate bearing capacity. So, net ultimate bearing capacity q net ultimate bearing capacity will be q ultimate minus gamma d f, because that is the net we have to remove the surcharge. So, that is why the finally net ultimate expression will be 5 point c u, because that is the expression and we are using this net ultimate is 5 point c u. C u is written because here your phi value is 0. So, it is undrained cohesion. So, as we have taken the phi value is 0 because in the saturated clay. So, this will be 5 point. So, here water table effect. So, in that case if this is the net ultimate because always we are talking of the net ultimate because ultimate when the allowable bearing capacity uh, ex, uh, definition also we are taking the net ultimate safe load in terms of net. So, that means here we will take. So, here so water table effect is is in the cohesion value because if it is a saturated clay then water table value will be in the cohesion value because in that case the shear strength parameter we should determine in the laboratory under saturated condition because our soil is saturated. So, here actual condition we have to test it is not in the 
uh, in the saturated condition, we have to test to determine the C u value. So, that means, the effect of submer uh, submerge or the sub uh, effect of the water or the submergence is to reduce the undrained shear strength of the soil. So, that means, because of this water effect, the C u value will reduce. So, that is why we have to determine the C u value under saturated condition. So, that is the water table effect for the clay soil. Now, if it is a sandy soil or the C phi soil, then what will happen? Now, in that case, so if, we, if it is a this uh, your C phi soil, in general C phi soil or the phi soil, then this water table have a, have a significant effect, because you can see in that case it will that because we have two unit weight. Now, this value will affect this unit weight value. Initially, you are taking the unit weight of if it is the dry soil. Now, we have to take the unit weight at different location depending upon the location of the water table, because your unit weight will vary. Okay. So, now, the first case that water table is above the base of the footing. Okay. So, this is the water table, d w is the depth of the water table, d f is the depth of the foundation and the water table is here. Now, the as I mentioned the q, the surcharge load is the above the base of the foundation soil weight. So, surcharge will be equal to, now in that case inst inst initially the if it is a dry soil, then surcharge we are writing just d f into or gamma into d f gamma is the dry weight, but here the unit weight this gamma is the unit weight of here and here the gamma dash or gamma sub. So, as I mentioned if nothing is mentioned uh, in the gamma, if it is only gamma then it is the bulk unit weight and if it is gamma bar or gamma sub then it is submerged unit weight. So, gamma dash is gamma saturated minus gamma w saturated unit weight minus unit weight of water. So, this is the unit unit weight of water generally we take 10 kilo Newton per meter square. Okay. So, that is why now instead of using this gamma, now we have to take the effective overburden pressure. So, effective overburden pressure will be gamma into d w plus a into gamma dash, because a is your the zone below the water table. So, that will be the q. So, finally, as your a is equal to d f minus a w. So, we can write this in this form and finally, we will put this expression here. So, here now if I two cases if d w is equal to 0 that means, it is as the base then your this gamma will be because if d w is equal to 0 then this will be totally submerged because it is the total soil is submerged. And the second gamma this this is always submerged whether the d w is 0 or d w is uh, at the base or in between that, because this second gamma or the third term gamma is a soil in this zone and the second term gamma soil in this zone. So, that is why third term gamma this gamma is always gamma submerged and if your uh, a is equal to 0 that means, it is at the base then the the surcharge of the soil above the base is will be the gamma d f and below the base will be the submerge. Okay. So, this is for the if the water table above the base of the foundation and remember that the worst condition we will get if the water table is at the ground level that means, d w is 0. So, that will give the worst condition. So, if your that will give you the lowest bearing capacity. You can see in both the cases it is submerged. So, your gamma w will be gamma will be reduced, but as water table decreases a depth of the water table goes down 
then your bearing capacity will increase. And generally, if the water table depth is below the uh, base, if it is so, suppose if the water table depth is greater than the B from the base of the footing, then we do not consider any effect of the water table. So, but if it is within that zone, you have to consider the water table. So, last on the next condition is that if the water table is be below the base of the base of the footing, in that case we have to take the gamma bar. So, gamma bar will take in terms of gamma uh, submerge and the gamma bulk and we put. So, because your first W uh, unit weight first unit weight will be always gamma bulk because now water table is below the base of the footing. So, this will be always gamma or the gamma bulk, but the second one will change depending upon the position of the water table. And finally, if it is B is 0 that means at the base of the footing then this is will be the gamma uh, sub because it is total soil below the base of the footing is submerged. Now, if it is beyond the water table is at B, then there is no effect. So, water table effect will consider up to the depth B below the base of the footing. Beyond that, there is no water table effect. So, now these are the all effect I have discussed on the bearing capacity equation that is proposed by the Tazaki. So, in the next class, I will discuss the others bearing capacity equation proposed by the various researcher and for, for different condition and with different correction factors those are applied on those bearing capacity equation. Thank you.